Amen. God bless you this evening. Let us all stand and we'll open our service tonight in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we are truly grateful, Lord, to be here tonight, Lord, and for your grace and mercy that's extended to us, Father, and Lord, for the protection that you've given to us uh, for the start of this week, Father, and Lord, we just ask that you would be with us in this service, Father, and that everything that's done and said may be glorifying to you, and Lord, we look forward to what you'd have for us in your word tonight, Father, and Lord, the opportunity to grow just a little bit more in the likeness of you. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You can be seated. Sing the familiar one, number 612. <clears throat> As the deer panteth for the water. <clears throat> As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. For you alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone does my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You are my friend and you are my brother even though you are my king I want you more than any other so much more than anything for you alone are my strength my shield to you alone does my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. Oh, I want you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. For you alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone does my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee. Amen. We're going to try our newest song again. I've got the right words up there this time. <coughs> in the way that we practice it and she plays. <coughs> Amen. We bow down and confess you are Lord. In this place we bow down and confess you are Lord. In this place you are all I need. It's your face I see. In the presence of your light, we bow down, we bow down, we bow down and confess you are Lord in this place. We bow down and confess you are Lord in this place. You are all I need. It's your face I seek in the presence of your light. We bow 
bow down, we bow down, we bow down, we bow down and confess you are Lord in this place. We bow down and confess you are Lord in this place. You are all I need. It's your face I see in the presence of your light. We bow down, we bow down, we bow down. At this time, we'll take our prayer request before the Lord this, uh, this evening. <coughs> we have any uh, spoken prayer requests tonight? Oh, yes. Remember Sister Lisa in prayer tonight and Brother John. I think they're really close to having the baby, so quite a rodeo for first-time parents. <laughs> Uh, but they'll do just fine because we know our Heavenly Father is watching out for them. Uh, I got a new prayer list here. Uh, it says uh, Grace Fellowship Tabernacle and our sister churches, Grace Gospel Church, Brother Don Hoffman's Church, Grace Ministries in Minnesota, Joseph and Billy Paul and the Branham Tabernacle, Brother Collins Church, Higher Ground Christian Academy Assembly and our many sister churches all over the world for both church members and pastors locally and internationally that God would be with them throughout their daily activities and that he would fill them with a deeper understanding of his word that they may be completely sanctified and rapture ready and that God would heal anyone in their congregation of illnesses and give victory for all their trials. <clears throat> Special prayer requests. Brother Joe Mills' family for his wife and children and the coming child. Uh, no, uh, Brother Brian Chips for his continued healing. Uh, also for Brother John McRae for his complete healing of his body. Uh, Special prayer requests uh, for Brother Collins. Uh, Brother Bill Caldwell, Brother Daniel Mabuka in Congo, Brother Daniel Frangus in Australia, Brother Brian Miller in England. Uh, and also for the expecting mothers of our church here, Brother Phil Abbott, Australia for a safer job, and Brother Daniel, and I'm not uh, going to say the last name because I can't pronounce it. Huh? No, it's Asher Wethane, <laughs> something like that. Ash, Asher Wethane. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mara Payne in India, special unspoken prayer requests for them. And all our unspoken prayer requests can be known by the lifting of our hands tonight, and we'll go with the, to the Lord with prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we humbly come before you tonight, Lord, and Lord, we lift all these requests up before you this evening, Father. Lord, the the many churches and the the uh, people that are in them, Father, that may be sick tonight, Father, may you touch their bodies. And Lord, for the 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 leaders and the the pastors, Lord, of the churches that we mentioned, Lord, that they would continue to uh, receive what you would have for them and their congregation, Lord, to help us to grow into that stature of a perfect man, Lord, that we might be rapture ready, Lord, and Lord, for Brother John and Lisa tonight, Lord, that they may have peace in their hearts, Lord, and that all things go well with the, the birth of their child, Father, and we just lift them up before you tonight, Father, and uh, all the requests, Lord, too many to mention tonight and to remember, but Lord, we lift them up before you, and Lord, we believe in our hearts, and Lord, mainly we believe in your word because you promised it to us, Father. We lift them up before you and our hands that were lifted, Lord, and the desires that be upon our hearts, Lord, we lift them also before you tonight. We thank you for the the work that you will do in each one of those lives and situations. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.
I am the God that healeth thee. <coughs> I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and I healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and you healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Amen. He sent his word. That's all we need. As Brother Brian said on Sunday, y'all, don't look at the symptoms. Kind of hard not to do that sometimes, but because your body feels pain and sorrow, but he has comfort in his word this evening. Amen. Let's all stand and we'll sing only believe as we ask Brother Brian to come. Only believe. Only believe, only believe. All things are possible, only believe. Jesus, you're here. Jesus, you're here. All things are possible now that you're here. Jesus, you're here. Jesus, you're here. And all things are possible now that you're here. Amen. For our text this evening, we're going to look at Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. We have it up there. Where the Apostle Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ is living in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we've read this so many times, and yet, Lord, it means something more and more to us each time that we read it. And Lord, that it's not our life that we live by, but it's that your life, the life that was in your son, Jesus, the life that raised him up from the dead, <coughs> the life that came back on the day of Pentecost, the life that now lives in your bride. And Father, we realize that it's not just that life, but it's the faith of the Son of God. It's the actual revelation that he had, that we have, and that we're living by. <coughs> so we ask you, Lord, to help us to understand what this means and help us to better live it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He may be seen. <clears throat> now, the message entitled uh, Having the Same Faith, the Apostle Paul is not telling us here that uh, we are to live by faith, uh, but to the casual reader, it may appear that way. But notice how specific the Apostle Paul chooses his words. He says, notice he said, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Now, there are many times in Scripture that Jesus says the words, thy faith has saved thee, or thy faith has saved thee, 
or thy faith hath made thee whole, or thy faith hath made thee well. <clears throat> and in all of these, the same Greek word sozo is used. Now this word sozo was both a spiritual and a physical meaning. Uh, we see the same word used for healing and for saving and for making well in the following scriptures. In, Ma in Matthew 9 and 22 we read, But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. In Mark 5 and 34 we read, And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole, go in peace and be, be whole of thy plague. <coughs> and Luke 7 and 50, And he said to the woman, Thy faith has saved thee, go in peace. And Luke 18, 42, And Jesus said unto him, uh, Receive thy sight, thy faith has saved thee. Again, we also see in Acts 14 and 9, the same, uh, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. So we see the same word used uh, for healing and for being well and, and saving and all those things. <clears throat> now, the Greek word sozo means to save or to keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction. It also means to save from injury or peril, to save from suffering from disease, to make well, to heal, to restore, to health, to preserve one who is in danger of destruction, to save or rescue, to deliver from the penalties of judgment. And that, notice, that's when Jesus says, Thy faith hath done all these things. All right? But in Galatians 2 and 20, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the faith of the Son of God. <clears throat> All right. So we must ask ourselves, what is this faith that sozo them? For people can have faith in a tree to heal them, and by believing, they get healed. So what then is the difference between thy faith and the faith, which Paul speaks of, was now living in him? You may, you may use your faith to receive healing, but Paul is telling us in our text to, uh, to this evening that he is living by the faith of another, specifically the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is his faith that matters, not yours, not mine. When it comes to this, God does not concern himself with your faith. In fact, he is not even interested in your faith when it comes to receiving eternal life. Nor does your faith bear any substance with God, even though faith is a substance of things hoped for. And unless your faith is the same faith that God gave to his son, then it means absolutely nothing to God. Because we are told in Ephesians 4 that there is only one faith. Now let's just read that for ourselves. Ephesians 4 and 5, Paul said, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And that one baptism is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is what Paul is speaking of there. Uh, for he also said in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, uh, For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. And William Bram said the same thing in a sermon, God's only provided place of worship. He said, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That's Holy Ghost baptism. The water baptism just puts you in fellowship with the people that you recognize that you have accepted Christ. That's true. But it's spirit baptism. I can call the name of Jesus over you and baptize you. That doesn't make it so. But when once the Holy Spirit, really genuine word, comes into you, the word, Jesus, then, then brother, the message is no secret to you then. You know it, brother. It, but uh, it, it's all lit up before you. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so Brother Brown makes a real big distinction between baptism by water and baptism with the Holy Ghost. He says when you have the true baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're going to understand the message. Now, Brother Brown said in his sermon, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, now sometimes today it's been said amongst many believers, uh, they say about certain things, oh, well, that's against my faith, or, or fa our faith doesn't teach that. But there's only really one faith. And the Bible says so one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and there's one faith, and that is the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I think this is the reason we have so many people who walk in error today, because they have not allowed the genuine word of the Holy Spirit to impregnate them with the genuine spirit of the living God. They have a baptism based on doctrinal acceptance. Therefore, Paul is speaking of only one faith, and he tells us this is one faith, uh, that, th that this one faith is the faith of the Son of God. Now, <clears throat> I just made a statement. I want to clarify it. All right, I said people base their faith on doctrine, and then they base their baptism on their doctrinal understanding. We have people going around the world today that are saying that once you come to the knowledge of the Son of God, in other words, once you come to the doctrine of Christ, you've got to be rebaptized, and that's total error. You don't have to be rebaptized if you've been baptized already in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
you see? But it's a denominational thing. You come to the Lutheran church, <clears throat> you know, you become a Lutheran, you accept their doctrine, now you get baptized in the Lutheran church. You, you, become a, you go to a Baptist church, you accept their doctrine, you get baptized in the doctrine of the Baptist church. But if you've been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's it. You don't have to have suspenders and a belt and, you know, three, you don't have to, it, it's just there's one formula and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. All right. In fact, Brother Bram says this very same thing in a sermon, Palm Worm, Locust, and Caterpillar. He said, you might have a faith, but we want the faith. Earnestly contend, that's argue for it, stand up for it, earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Um, when were they called? They were, they were, uh, when they were sanctified. The Holy Spirit sanctified them, and they were called saints. Now, Jude says, a brother, a foster brother of Jesus, I want you to earnestly contend for the faith, for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Don't never let that faith drop. And the faith of the saints was not in creeds. You see, our faith should not be in doctrine. It should not be in creeds. It should be in what God has already done for us through his son Jesus. Not in denominations, not in a church buildings, or not in associations. Well, you see, I associate with... Uh, the Levial group, so <clears throat> therefore that's where I base my faith. Hogwash. Hogwash. It should be based in the person of Jesus Christ. What he did. All right. Now, not in associations, not in creeds, not in denominations, not in church buildings, but it was in the presence of the living God. They had faith to heal the sick, cast out devils, do miracles, all the great promises that Jesus made. The first church held on to that. It was the lifeline. Now notice he tells us that this faith is not a faith in a doctrine or creed or some church affiliation. But this faith is in the presence of the living God living in you and doing in you what it did in his son Jesus. Let me just repeat that. This faith is in the presence of the living God living in you and doing in you what it did in his son Jesus. Too many people have their faith based on the vessel. They saw God, the presence of God, living in that vessel. But what's it doing for you? If that same God that lived in that vessel is not living in your vessel, then you don't have the faith of the Son of God. Okay? Ephesians 2 and 8 tells us, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Then your faith is not what it does, or uh, is not what does it, but that faith which is a gift of God to you, is a revelation that produces in you what it did in the firstborn son. So when Paul says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I'm living, but it's not Paul living. It's Christ is living in me, and I'm living by the same revelation that the Son of God lived. All right? That's what he's living by. In 2 Timothy 1 and 9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. And so we see it is not what we do or can do, but what he did for us before the foundations of the world, and it's just our becoming obedient to his purpose and grace. In other words, because we are sons, all right, we, then we just, then we, because we're sons, we yield ourselves to what we are because we see what he is Romans 3 19 now we know that what things soever the law saith it saith to them who are under the law <clears throat> that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may be guilt, become guilty before God therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight for by the law is the knowledge of sin but now the righteousness of the right wiseness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the right wiseness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God 
being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom, has, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his right wiseness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time his right wiseness, that we might be just, the justifier of him, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what? Law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of, of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. In other words, it is nothing you have done or could do, but simply what God has already done for you and to you and in you and through you. Now, what concerns me <coughs> is that the people over time come to the place where they have lost sight of the faith of Christ. And they look to their own faith as the important thing with God. These are very important words, so you know, write them down. But God has never been impressed or moved upon by man's faith except when it comes to healing and some things in that nature. But even in the Bible, you see many people who never do get saved are, that are healed because they have faith for healing. But when it comes to God life, God is impressed and moves upon his own faith, and that faith is in the form of revelation. And therefore, if faith is a revelation, then when they lose sight of the faith, they are losing sight of the revelation. Now, Brother Bram taught us the greatest of all revelations is the supreme deity of Jesus Christ. So you must understand by revelation the Godhead in order to understand the relationship between Father and Son and how you also have the same relationship with him as your father and you as, as being one of his sons and then by that revelation you live and are made alive. <clears throat> All right? That's the same revelation that Jesus lived by and that quickened him. Now from his sermon, The Rapture, Brother Branham said, but to the church, the bride, the rapture is a revelation to her. It's revealed to her that the revelation, the true bride of Christ, will be waiting for that revelation of the rapture. Now, it is a revelation, for the revelation is faith. You cannot have a revelation without it being faith. Faith is a revelation, because it's something that's revealed to you. Faith is a revelation. Faith is something that has been revealed to you, like it was to Abraham, that could call anything contrary to what had been revealed to him as though it wasn't so. That's what faith is, is the revelation of God. The church is built upon a revelation the whole entire body. So if it is the revelation of God, then there is not then it is not the revelation of some other thing. Too many people get sidetracked by little revelations here, little revelations there. Forget it. There's one Lord and one revelation of that one Lord. That's what it's all about. That's what redemption is all about. All right. Now, from his sermon, Works is Faith Expressed, Brother Bram said, Now, faith is a revelation from God. Now, faith is a revelation. There's where I want to stay there just for a moment. It's a revelation. Uh, he has revealed it to you by his grace. It's nothing you did. You didn't work yourself up into faith. You never had faith. It's given to you by the grace of God. And God reveals it to you. Therefore, faith is a revelation, and the whole church of God is built upon the revelation. And again from a sermon, anointing ones at the end time, Brother Branham said, what is faith? Faith is something that's revealed to you that is, that is not yet, <clears throat> but you, you believe it will be. Faith is a revelation of the will of God. So by revelation, and the churches today don't even believe in spiritual revelation. They believe in a dogmatic teaching of some system. But by revelation, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than that of Cain which God testified that he was righteous, amen. I hope you see that. See, see where we're living. See the hour. And from invisible union of the bride, he said, what is revelation? Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell can't prevail against it. Faith is a revelation, because faith has been revealed to you, uh, able by faith, offered by revelation, faith, offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than that of Cain. So what separated the difference between Cain and Abel? It wasn't their religion. It wasn't their dogma, it wasn't their creeds, it wasn't their doctrine, it was a revelation. And not just a revelation, it was the revelation. All right? Now, from works of faith expressed, listen, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, right? He had the revelation of the Son of God, the bleeding, dying lamb he slay, was slain before the foundations of the world, 
and, and, and so he had the revelation. Now, for works of faith expressed in an audience of people where a prayer line comes through, uh, you'll find some, and they were all good people, we'll say. There's some that's trying hard to believe it, trying to work themselves into it. Some just can't do it at all, and others, it's just by grace, it's just given to them. Now, there is a difference. See, that does it. That's the real revelation, because faith is a revelation from God. It must be revealed first. Therefore, we should never underestimate the importance of revelation, for by revelation we are saved, by revelation we are justified, <clears throat> by revelation we are sanctified, by revelation we receive the Spirit of Christ, and by revelation we are given birth into the family of God, and by revelation we have access to God, and by revelation we live and move and have our being. Now, from the Church Age book, chapter 1, introduction to the revelation of Jesus Christ, Brother Bram said, the importance of revelation by the Spirit to a true believer, and we're going to talk about what a true believer is on Sunday, but the importance of revelation by the Spirit to a true believer can never be overemphasized. Revelation means more to you than perhaps you even realize. Now, I'm not talking about this book of Revelation than you. I'm not, I, I, I'm talking about all revelation. It is a tremendous importance to the church. Do you remember in Matthew 16 where Jesus asked the disciples this question? Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, well, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some uh, Elias, uh, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he saith unto them, but whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. <laughs> now, the Roman Catholics say that the, the church is built upon Peter. Now, that is really carnal. How could God build a church upon a man so unstable that he denied the Lord Jesus and cursed while doing it? God can't build his church upon any man born in sin. So God did not build this end-time church on that man. He was born in sin. All right? <clears throat> and it wasn't some rock lying there as though God had hollowed the ground at that spot, and it isn't, as the Protestants say, that the church is built upon Jesus. It was the revelation. It was the revelation, not on a vessel, but the revelation in a vessel, in you. All right? The same revelation that was in that vessel, Jesus, is in you. Read it the way it's written. Flesh and blood hath not revealed it, but my Father which it hath revealed it, and upon this rock, Revelation, I'll build my church. The church is built on Revelation, on the thus saith the Lord. And there's only one faith, which means there's only one Revelation. And that Revelation is what justifies you and gives you access to God. And what is that Revelation? Paul said there is one Lord and one faith, Revelation, and one baptism. And that baptism is in the name of that one Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that one baptism is the baptism of the one spirit by which we are all baptized into that one body. So the revelation of that one Lord allows us to baptize in his name. And with that baptism in water, we have a promise to receive the baptism which is of and by the spirit of the one Lord. And that brings with it justification from our, uh, for, from our sins and forgiveness and all the divine promises of God. <clears throat> now, our being baptized by one spirit into one body and that one spirit is the same spirit of the one Lord, so in effect the spirit, life, of that one Lord enters us, making us alive in that one body, yet it does not make us two lords, just as uh, the spirit of the one Lord entering into the body of the firstborn son did not make him two lords. I mean, if you're baptized by one spirit into one body, the same as Jesus was baptized by one spirit into one body, and people want to say, that makes two lords, but with you it's different. It's not different. It's the same. He's not two lords. Some read Acts 2.36 and they say, since, Jesus made, uh, since God made Jesus both Lord and Christ, therefore there are two lords. Let's just read this. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, in other words the vessel, both Lord and Christ. Now, if God made Jesus both Lord and Christ, and that makes two lords, then that would also have to make two Christ. And we know there isn't two Christ. Now, but how did God, the anointer, and the one true Lord, make Jesus both Lord and Christ? By entering into him. 
So when the Lord entered into the vessel of his son, he now became the expression of the one true Lord and Christ. All right? Brother Brant, like Brother Vale said, God, that was God's body, but he just loaned it to his son. All right. Now, Brother Brown said in his sermon, anointed ones at the end time, he said, now notice, that was Jesus speaking. Now here come Paul right behind him and said, now in the last days there will come religious people, see, having a form of God-likeness, and lead silly women, led away with all kinds of worldly lusts. Then why, what, then they, they wonder and they say, well, why do you pick on them women? Oh, for goodness. They just don't even see it. Lead silly women, laden with diverse lusts, away from things like, see, and as Janus and Jambres, Matthew 24, 24, false Christ, false anointed, doing signs and wonders to deceive the elected. Now, as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so will these reprobates, reprobate mind concerning the faith, not a faith, the faith, one faith, one Lord, one. You can't have one faith without believing in one Lord. You can't have two baptisms, not one for the Father and for the Son and the Holy Ghost. There's one baptism, Jesus Christ. That's right. See, it false baptism. And Brother Bram also said in a sermon, we would see Jesus. He said, now look, when he was here on earth, how many knows that that was the pillar of fire that followed the children of Israel in the wilderness and that it was Christ, the angel of the covenant. All right. And how many knows that that was Jesus in Jesus, that same spirit? Look, when they questioned him, St. John 6, calling to your attention of it, uh, they said, you say you're greater than Abraham. And he said, why, you're only 50 years old yet, uh, yet. And he said, before Abraham was, I am. I am was in the burning bush. Is that right? A pillar of fire. When he was here on earth, he, he said, I came from God and I go to God. Did he say it? And then if he came from the pillar of fire and he returned back to it again after his death, burial, resurrection, St. Paul was on his road down to Damascus and a bright, and a big bright light struck him in the face and blinded him. And none of the rest of them saw it. Paul saw it. It, it blinded him. He fell on the ground. And what is this pillar of fire again? Saul, Saul, why persecuted saw me? And he said, who art you, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus. Is that right? <clears throat> now, Notice Jesus in Jesus. The Lord in the vessel. Right? So when God entered into the body of his son, that is when the body became both Lord and Christ, the anointed one. Not two lords or you break scripture, and certainly not two Christ, although some of them believe that. <clears throat> now, notice Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, for by one spirit... Are we all baptized into one body, whether it be Jews or Gentile, whether it be bond or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit? What spirit is he talking about? He's talking about God. God is the spirit. All right. Again, in Ephesians 2.18, for through him, we both, we both, through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. So who is Paul speaking of when he says through him? He's talking about Jesus, the Son of God. Notice, but uh, for through him, we have access by one spirit. One spirit, God's spirit. Through Jesus, who shed that spirit on the cross, we have access, we, we, many, have access by one spirit under the Father. So Paul's talking uh, about the Son of God. To better understand who Paul's talking about here, let's go back to verse 12, uh, that at that time, ye... Uh, that means you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. <coughs> but now in Christ Jesus, you, who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. <coughs> so who is this both that Paul is speaking of here? He made both one. He's talking about us and Christ as long as we are in Christ, and that's the key. And notice, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandment, contained in ordinances, for to make in himself twain one new man. So making peace. Making in himself, in his flesh, what was it? God in Christ reconciling the world to himself. God, one person, Jesus the man, the vessel, another. Making of two, one person, or one, as Brother Brown said, expression, okay? 
having abolished in his flesh the enmity even of the law of commandments containing ordinances, and to make in himself twain of one new man, so making peace. <clears throat> so how did he make of himself of twain? Which means two. This happened when God entered into Jesus, making the two one. In other words, Jesus in Jesus. Now Paul refers to this in Romans 8 and verse 11, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So Paul is speaking of the same one who lived in Jesus, now living in you. So in getting back to Ephesians 2, let's pick up at verse 16, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. In other words, God through the instrument of his son brought, uh, brought, uh, raised, up, raised up both his son and us on that cross and came and preached peace uh, to you which were far off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto, unto the Father. <coughs> I love that. Who is both the firstborn son and then sons. That's who. Now listen. What I'm trying to do is get you to understand that when Paul is talking about we live by the revelation of the Son of God, he's saying the very same revelation that he had, that he was the Son of God, we're living by that same revelation as sons of God. All right? Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. See, by one spirit, we're all baptized into one body. And we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together, forming one body, growth, growth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom you, are, you also are built together for an habitation of God through the spirit. Oh, my, I tell you. Notice that Jesus being filled with the spirit of the one Lord, no more made him two lords than you and I being filled with that same spirit makes us two lords. In fact, to go there, then you would have a real hard time understanding Romans 14 and 9. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. So do you have two lords there? He's Lord of the dead. He's Lord of the living. Is that two lords? No, it's one Lord who is Lord of both the dead and the living. You see? Now, if the church has lost sight of the revelation of Jesus Christ, then they are without God. For the Apostle John said in 1 John 5 and 10, He that believeth on the Son of God echoes the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the, re the record that God gave of his Son. And what's that record? Behold, you know, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am pleased to dwell in, right? <clears throat> and in 1 John 5 and 12, he that echoes the Son will echo the same life that's in the Son. And he that echoes not the Son of God will not echo the same life that's in the Son. All right? 2 John 1 and 9, Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ echoes not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he echoes both the Father and the Son. Now, just because you are echoing both Father and Son does not mean uh, that you are saying two different things. In other words, you're not saying, well, the Father said one thing and the Son said something else and I'm echoing both of them. No, the Father said it and Jesus echoed it. He was the firstborn. He was the first echo. And now you're echoing the same thing. For the Son echoes the, uh, the Father and we echo the Son. And it is the same echo all the way down the line from the eldest son to the youngest son. <clears throat> That's why when Brother Branham said there's one voice, there's one voice for the hour. And when the prophet's off the scene, that voice is still there because it's in the people. And we're now echoing the shout. All right. Now notice what the apostle tells us in Hebrews 10 and 38. Now the just shall live by faith. By what? By revelation. The just or those who have been justified live by revelation, period. But if any man draw back, my soul hath no pleasure in him. If any man draws back from what? Well, that's what he's talking about here. He's talking about faith, which is revelation. And God says, if any man shall draw back from this revelation, he has no pleasure in that man. That is why understanding the relationship between father and son is so very important because it is the expression of of the revelation of Jesus Christ. How that God was in Christ in the same way he is in you and he's in me. And to draw back from that 
would mean that you have no part with that, which means that you are none of his. In fact, the Apostle Paul said in Romans 8 and 9, but you are not in, in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he's none of his. <clears throat> All right. Romans 1.17, for therein is the righteousness, the right wiseness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. <clears throat> now this from faith to faith, if there is only one faith, would have to be then that one faith which was in the firstborn son to that one faith, the same faith that's in sons. Huh? Absolutely. Because it says the just shall live by faith or by revelation. So what he's telling us here is that if we live by the same faith that Jesus lived by, the same revelation that Jesus had of his relationship with the Father is the same revelation we are to live by. That's why Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. If you say the, the word confess is homologio, it means saying the same words. So if you say the same thing about me before men, I'll say the same thing about you before my Father. The same thing would be, he's my brother. All right? Now, if, we're, if we are to, be, to believe that faith is a revelation, something that's been revealed to you, then we should read the word faith as the word revelation. And thus we will insert revelation where the word faith is used. For therein is the righteousness or the right wiseness of God revealed from revelation to revelation, as it is written, the just shall live by revelation. <clears throat> In Galatians 3 and 11, the Apostle Paul further tells us, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident the just shall live by revelation. So how does this revelation become one and, and the same in Christ and in us? Colossians 3 and 3, he says, For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. In other words, your life is covered with Christ in God. And if our life is hid by being covered with the very life of Christ, then we see why the Apostle Paul continues on in the next verse where he says, when Christ who is our life shall appear, shall manifest, then shall you also appear, you shall also manifest with him in the same glory, in the, in the doxa, in the opinions and values and judgments. All right? In other words, <clears throat> then it's not you manifesting, it's him manifesting because you're hid in him. Hallelujah. That's why Paul says, I'm, uh, you know, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm dead, yet I'm living. You know, it's not me that's living. It's Christ living in me. All right? <clears throat> and not only by revelation, but more specifically, the same revelation, as we see in Galatians 2.16, uh, he tells us, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the revelation of Christ and not by the works of the law, but by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. <laughs> now remember, the word revelation means manifestation of divine truth. So the just shall live by the manifestation of divine truth. Now, the just shall live by the manifestation of the divine truth in him? Well, he lived by the manifestation of divine truth. But the just shall live by the manifestation of divine truth in them. So you see, it is the same revelation that makes him that moves us. The same revelation of sonship that motivated his is what motivates us. And notice how even Jude, the brother of Jesus, spoke on the importance of taking a stand for the revelation of Jesus Christ. In Jude uh, 1 and 3, he says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the revelation which was once delivered unto the saints. And in 1 Timothy 4 and 1, we read, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the revelation, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. In other words, allowing other things to come in and take your mind off the fact that the revelation or the manifestation of divine truth is in you. He was a son of God, I am a son of God. The works he did, I will do. The life he lived, I will live. The words he spoke, I will speak. The actions he partake of, I will take them, partake of. Them. <clears throat> because it's the same spirit. You see? Having the same revelation, the same spirit. Now, if the warning is that some shall depart from the revelation, then why do they continue to fight the understanding of the Godhead? Because they are ordained to depart from it. Philippians 2, uh, 3 and 9 tells us, 
and be found in him, not having mine own right wiseness, which is of the law, but that which is through revelation, the, the revelation of Christ, the right wiseness, which is of God by revelation. And the Apostle Paul makes it pretty clear in Ephesians 4 that you cannot truly have a unity of the revelation except by the knowledge of the Son of God. Ephesians 4.13, till we all come in the unity of the revelation. Now, <clears throat> what's the unity of the revelation? You're living the same life I'm living. You're, you're, you've got, you're doing the same acts that I'm doing. You're doing the same works I'm doing. Why? Because we're doing the same, we're, we're living by the same life, the same revelation, the same works, the same actions, the same speech that Jesus did. You see? Till we all come in a unity, in a, till we all are united to the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And the knowledge of the Son of God. Unto a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Unto the, unto the measure of of the character of the fulfilling of Christ. Now, 2 Timothy 4 and 7. Paul lets us know, uh, Paul lets, lets us all know that the main thing is the revelation, and that is the only thing worth fighting for. He says, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the revelation. And in 2 Timothy 3 and 8, <coughs> the Apostle Paul warns us that there will arise men who are perverse because they are reprobate concerning the revelation. And the word reprobate means unapproved and, and worthless. So we see that these are men who resist the truth because their own revelation is worthless. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning what? The revelation. What revelation? The revelation of Jesus Christ. All right. The manifestation of divine truth in you. Reprobate concerning the revelation of what? Now remember, there is only one revelation, and that is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And what do they do? They do not understand how that God and Christ could be one, and thus they do not understand how that God and his bride can be one in the same way that Jesus and God were one, which Jesus explained very plainly in John 17, 22. He said, And the glory, which is the doxa, which is the opinions, values, and judgments, which thou gavest me... I have given them that, or for the purpose, that they may be one, even as or in the same manner, the same way that we are one. I in them, that's the revelation of Jesus Christ. God was in Christ, reconciling the world. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. But do not worry about them, don't fuss with them, the Apostle Paul made it clear in Romans 3, when he said in Romans 3 and 3, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the revelation of God without effect? In other words, is their lacking of revelation going to affect your receiving revelation and living it? Now, we should never underestimate the power of revelation, especially the revelation of Jesus Christ, because by revelation, God framed the worlds, and by revelation, we are justified, and we have access to God. In closing, the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 3 and 12, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the revelation of him. What does that mean? When you recognize who your true father is, and who your true family are, and who your true eldest brother is, that he's a pattern. And when you step into that revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ, then you will begin to talk like him, act like him, live like him, and do the works that he did, because it's not you, it's God in you, the hope of glory. Finally, we're in closing, we read from 2 Corinthians 13 to 5, examine yourselves, all right, that's what we need to do, whether you be in the revelation. Prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobates. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Gracious Father, we want to thank you for your word. And Lord, you, you gave us a challenge at the end. You said try yourself. Try your own self. Test your own self. Is Jesus Christ living in me or is he not? Is he speaking through me? Is he acting through me? Are his works being done through me? Or are they not? And if they're not, are we reprobates? Or have we not come to that place yet? Now, Father, I just ask you to help each and every one of us 
to so enter in to the revelation of Jesus Christ that people in this generation will look at your life, their lives, and they'll mistake them for Jesus Christ just like people mistake Brother Branham for Jesus Christ. This is my prayer. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. I think you may need to go back and read that over, study that, because there's some very, very pointed things and very, very important things to understand. I entitled this, Having the Same Faith, Having the Same Revelation. Because if you truly have the same revelation that the Son of God had, and you can only have that if you're sons. Amen? Well, let's sing a song, I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. One more time. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able 